Amen. Okay, good morning, church. Good morning. Only Pastor Fumi is there responding. Well, it's a, okay, let's have our seats. Let's have our seats. Do we need coffee or tea? If you need tea, can I see your hand? If you need coffee, can I see your hand? Someone wants both tea and coffee. Why? It's quite cold this morning, right? Okay, can we settle down so we can commence the class this morning? Sister Evelyn, it's well with you. Do we need to close some windows? Because someone is almost there. Uh... All right. Let us start. There is none holy the Lord. There is none beside him. Neither is there a any God like our Lord. There is none holy as the Lord. There is none holy as the There is none beside thee, neither is there any God, I our God. There is none only as the Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. You are holy, 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 holy. holy. We are saved. You are holy. Holy is the Lord. Father, we thank you. Holy God, we worship you this morning. It is unto you we have gathered. It is unto you we have come. Spirit of God, we ask that you will breathe on us. Breathe on us, Father. Breathe on us. Breathe on us and set us on fire for you. Breathe on us, O Lord, and make us alive. Bring out yourself in us, that your world, this world, might see you even as you are in our lives, through our lives, in the name of Jesus. We commit this word that we are going to listen to from you. Oh Lord, this time that we are going to spend to study your word, we receive insight, we receive understanding, we receive wisdom, we receive light even from you in the name of Jesus. Teach us by yourself, Lord. Spirit of God, help us even to live by your word in the name of Jesus, because that is where faith comes. We hear, we live by your word in the name of Jesus. We will not be here as alone, but do us to the glory of your name and for the extension of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Good morning, everybody, again. You are welcome to School of the Word, 6th of August, 2023. In fact, you know what just came to my mind now? 1993. What happened in 1993? Who can remember? 
Some people were not born then. They are shaking their heads. Amen. All right. So this is 2023, the year of the Lord. Isn't every year the year of the Lord? It is. We give God praise for the eighth month of the year. How he has been with us, seen us through from the first day. I think the first day was a Monday, if I am not mistaken. Thank God for how he has helped us up to you now. Um, we've been going through a topic. Who can remind us of our topic? Rossam. Hello, Mr. Debbie, Mr. Evelyn, where are we going? Uncle Sam, remind us what has been our topic for the last three weeks. If I don't give him expo, hmm? he has been in this class, so his attendance is 100%. We are giving him 100% already. He has passed. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I'm never to occupy. What? I'm never to occupy. Ah. Wow. Enable to occupy. We're actually occupying anyway. Like like for real, we are occupying. Praise God. If you are not occupying, let me see your hand. Okay, so we are all occupying. He sincerely. Hmm? You are sincere, and I like your sincerity. But you are not sincere. Sincerely, sincerity, as they say, is not enough, right? Uh -huh. You are sincerely wrong. So who can help him? If you're low up, oh yeah, your turn. Um, we talked about pattern. The topic, the topic. The topic itself. Yes. But I can't remember the topic. Interesting. Okay, who can? Uh, Sam, you have done expo, oh yeah? Quickly, quickly, quickly. God is not a respecter of persons, a respecter of principle. Well, that sentence was found in the study, yes. But I asked for the topic of the study. All right, it's okay. Since, um, oh, okay. So we've been looking at the topic, building, building, according to the pattern, building according to the pattern. And what has been our anchor scripture? Matthew chapter 16, verse 18b. And the Bible says, Upon this rock, I, that is Jesus speaking here, said, I will build my church. He said, I will build my church. So in other words, there could be other churches that are being built. Of course, today we have the church of uh, Mormons, the church of Satan, and so on and so forth, right? And even supposedly the church of Christ, a particular assembly or local fellowship, of course it's a church, can morph into not being the church of Christ. Praise the Lord. In what case can this happen? Can someone, somebody quickly help us out? Where the church of Christ suddenly morphs into another church. Morphs, morphs, changes into another church. It doesn't belong to Christ anymore, so, suddenly. When it is not being built according to God's pattern, and then the person who is, of course, there's a builder. Paul was saying, right? That like a wise master builder, that he has laid the foundation. 
for, and let anyone who is building on top of it, let them be what? Careful how they build. That there is no other foundation that can be laid except the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So he has premised the foundation or described the foundation he built or he laid down. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. So if we have any other church in that sense, apart from the ones I mentioned earlier, the Church of Satan, the Church of Mormons, and all of that, that means that the Church of Christ suddenly morphed into the church of the person who is building. Praise the Lord. So in quote, it could be the senior pastor of that church, it could be the elder of that church, it could be the leader of that church, who is building his own church, so to speak. Taking the people away from what has been laid down. Praise the Lord. Uh, doctor is not around today, so I'm taking his, his place. Um, I believe he has laid a good foundation for this topic. We have been in discussions, and uh, it has been rich, right? If you have been blessed, can I see your hand? Last week, um, we had several discussions coming up, and um, there was a question. I know while speaking, Pastor Fumi, our senior pastor mentioned that um, we will continue or start that or answer that question today, or maybe yes. However, if we do not need to, I mean, I don't, I want to ask, do we still need any other discussion on that? Because there were several contributions that I think has addressed the question. Does anyone need further clarification? Is anyone confused about that question or the answers to those questions? There were two or three questions. Okay, nobody. All right, so we will move from that point. That's um, Roman figure three, number three, which talks about our pattern can come from the mind of a regenerate man. Our pattern can do what? Come from the, come from the, so where does it come from? Amen? The pattern, where does it come from? The mind. That's where I'm going to. So Jesus is our pattern, right? However, he needs to be impressed in our hearts. Our mind must accept and understand that, okay, this is the pattern I have to follow. This is the pattern I have to live by. This is the pattern I have to imitate. Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. We describe what a pattern is uh, two Sundays or three Sundays ago, who can remind us a pattern? I just gave us some form of uh, clue. When you talk about imitation, imitation is a situation where you look at the original and you attempt to copy exactly what you are seeing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. What does it say? Praise the Lord. Can anyone help us? 2 Corinthians 3, 18. Ma, sorry, ma. I beg your indulgence. Ma. If I, oh yeah, let's go. 2 Corinthians 3, 18, yes. You can open the Bible. Okay, read, read. 2 Corinthians 3, 18 said, So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, make us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. Thank you very much. Please, read that. What version is that? NLT, please take it again. So all of us who have had that veil removed mm. can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. Mm. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. Amen. Amen. Apostle Paul was speaking to 
the church here, saying, so, all of us, meaning there should be no exemption, every one of us must have that veil removed. Amen? Having had that veil removed, can see. It has to do with our eyes. Praise the Lord. Not just the eyes of the physical, but the eyes of the spirit. And when we talk about the eyes of the spirit, we are looking at perception. And that deals with our mind. Praise the Lord. Where understanding is established. Our mind, our heart. Praise the Lord. All right, so see and what? Reflect. Reflect. What reflects? A mirror. So, if I stand before a mirror, I partially stood before a mirror this morning. Men don't usually, Abi, right? This, I claim that we men, we don't stand before mirrors. I stood before a mirror this morning, but I didn't look at the mirror, unfortunately. <laughs> I only picked something in front of the mirror. Eh? <laughs> so, but if you stand before a mirror, right, what do you see? You see yourself. Some of us have watched cartoons where uh, a character goes before a mirror and is wondering who is inside this mirror. Have you seen those cartoons before? And the character is doing like this. And the person in the mirror is also, I said the person, seeming that it's somebody else outside of the person who is, or rather the character is in a, so if it does like this, the, the mirror uh, image also does like this. If it does like this, same thing. So you see the character now stay at the edge of the mirror. And we praise the Lord. So whatever it does, the mirror image does. So a reflection is exactly what the original is. Praise the Lord. But in this case, we know that we are human beings. However, Christ wants us to reflect him in ever-increasing measure. But then we can only do that by beholding, by seeing him, and he does the rest of the work as we remain focused. Just to bring that to perspective. So um, we said that our pattern can come from the mind of a regenerate man. Someone who has been regenerated, whose spirit has been regenerated. Praise the Lord. He is born again. Amen? Say, so just because we are Christians and have a good heart, it does not mean that every thought and idea that we have comes from God. We've dealt with this. It is possible to be sincere, to be, but to be wrong. That is, to be sincerely wrong. It's possible to be sincerely wrong. Yeah, so the last um, letter there for the number three is God is looking for those who will worship him in spirit, that is sincerity, and in truth, according to the word of the Lord. John 4, verse 24. Let's open to that passage of scripture. John 4, verse 24. Media, are you with us this morning? John 4, 24, what does it say? Can someone read for us? Thank you, ma. God is what? Spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. We have said this that earlier, rather, that as we behold, we are changed into what we see. Praise the Lord. We are changed into what we see. So the mirror reflects the life of Christ in us. When God sees us, if you are born again, yes, you might be... Uh, one day born again or 10 years born again, but each time God looks at you, he sees the image of Christ. He sees what you are becoming. Praise the Lord. He doesn't see your sins. He doesn't see uh, your faults. 
or your deficiencies. What he says is the image of Christ. What you are becoming. But as you remain, like we said, as you remain focused, looking, beholding, seeing, then the actual image becomes more and more of a reality on this side of eternity. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is spirit. So if he is spirit, he is a Holy Spirit. Bringing that into perspective. He is what? The Holy Spirit. Hmm? Play of words now. He is spirit. He is the Holy Spirit. So qualifying what kind of spirit he is. Meaning, if we must worship him, holiness must be our goal. Praise the Lord. We must come to that place where he who is holy is seen in us. In our discussions, in our conversations, in our attitudes, in our characters, in the things we do, in the way we engage this side of eternity. Praise the Lord. So worshiping him in spirit, that is sincerity and in truth. Now, sincerity being, when you say somebody is um, sincere, that is his nature, right? He doesn't deceive anyone, doesn't lie, he doesn't, he's not deceptive. Even when he's sincerely wrong, he's sincere, right? Praise the Lord. That is the nature that God wants from us. Sincerity in spirit and then in truth, the reality of the word of the Lord. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So meaning whatever we engage in, how we live, must be according to the word of the Lord. Sincerely. You know, you can try to replicate what the word says without being sincere. Can anyone speak to that? We are trying to... I'm using play of words now. You can replicate what the word says without being sincere. You can say you love someone. You can show it to people. Ah, I buy something for Bro Fola now. I love it. I say it. I love you. But then, in my heart of heart, I know whether I am sincere or not. God knows whether I am sincere or not. Do we get that? So you can try to be like without being sincerely wanting to be like. Praise the Lord. So God is looking for those who will worship him in spirit, sincerity, and in truth. Living by the word of God. Being sincere to seek his face, to know him and become like him. Praise the Lord. So Jesus here was speaking to the woman at the well and the engagement, we can read through the, um, that passage of Scripture, John 4, for better um, depth or understanding of the story. So, number four, our pattern can and must come from God. Our pattern can and must come from God. Our pattern can and must come from God. We have said that sufficiently from the beginning of this um, study. But just to... Okay, let, me, let me leave that. Um, let's go on to B. God is a God of order. God is a God of order and has a plan and a pattern for everything that he does. Amen? God is a God of what? Order and has what? A plan and pattern for just one thing, for everything he does. So in other words, there is nothing that God has done that did not have order and a plan and a pattern. Amen? There is nothing God has done that doesn't have a plan and a pattern. That reflects order. Praise the Lord. The creation of the world. The first one there is, there was order in creation. The creation of the world, Genesis 1 and 2. 
already gives us insight on who God is. You know, usually they would say, first impression, hmm? first impression does what? It lasts. The first engagement you have with someone gives you, maybe not 100%, but a reflection of who that person is. Praise the Lord. When you meet, for example, Sister Debbie, Sister Debbie, when people meet you, what is the first impression they have about you? They are the only ones that can say it. Okay, yes. Sister Efe, what is the impression you have when you met her the first time? She's an extrovert, that's for sure. You can um, see what she said. She's an extrovert, that's for sure. Interesting. So you're having your scorecard. Sister Titi, oh yeah, your first, uh -uh. You are, everybody, this is a class. Eh? No, I'm just asking, is she Is she? Extrovert? Interesting. <laughs> well, that's, you see, why I said it might not be 100%. So, what is your own impression? Uh -uh, let her answer. She has said, is she? So, what is she to you? Quickly, quickly, Sister she's Debbie, go, you are having she's your... She's a go-getter. She's just, a go-getter. So, when you say somebody is a go-getter, Extrovert, go-getter. Is there a similarity? I won't ask, bro, for that. Actually, there is. There the is. Temperaments, the temperaments, um, the extrovertic um, mm, temperaments extrovert. is sanguine and choleric. And choleric are go-getters. So mm. if she's saying she's a go-getter, mm -hmm. choleric is equal to extrovert. So mm. she's saying See the extrovert. mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> extrovert if, is equal to if a Equals they to have B. to be extrovert, even though they won't... And to. B equals to C. Meaning A equals to C. Thank you. You know, anyway, let's, <laughs> let's leave that mathematics. So, we are sort of out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Agreeing that Sister Debbie is outgoing. Right? Are you outgoing? You are not sure. You are trying. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, so in creation, we see God. That is the first encounter that we can say, oh, okay, if we are going to say who God is, right? God created the heaven and the earth. And all that he did in that space of time, Genesis 1 to 2, shows how he has already conceived it and brought that conception into a reality. Praise the Lord. It becomes a reflection of who he is. But then, when you say first impression reflects someone, then that impression or that nature must be consistent. Praise the Lord. It must be what? Consistent. Why? Because if that person does like this today, tomorrow he does something else. You say, ah, we are not sure who this person is. Praise the Lord. You are not what? Sure who this person is. Why? Because he is not or she is not consistent. So the first engagement we have with who God is with respect to order, planning, pattern is the creation. And Genesis 1 to 2 gives us that uh, insight. Amen. Number two, there was a pattern for the first man. There was a pattern for who? The first man. Genesis 1, 26. Can someone quickly read that for us? Genesis 1, 26. Genesis 1, 26. Quickly. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, um, over and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over everything creeping that creeps on the earth. Thank you, ma'am. Genesis one twenty six, right? Let us make man 
in our own what? Whose image here? So if we say that you are the image of God, that means that when we see you, we see a semblance of God. Amen? We see what? A semblance of God. There is the characteristics of God in you as a person. Yes, you might not have had the full expression of it. However, as a child of God, remember, we are not talking about uh, the fallen man now. Because God did not create a fallen man. He created an image like himself. Praise the Lord. It was much later that the man fell. Amen? So right now, for us being born again, we have come back to that status of the image of God. However, we need to grow into the full measure of it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the understanding that we are beholding him as in a mirror, 2 Corinthians 3.18, helps us to understand that as we continue to, we get transformed, we get changed into what we see from glory to glory, becoming like Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the first man, more or less, was created according to the pattern of uh, uh, I mean, according to a pattern, rather. And that pattern is what? God. God himself made himself the original of man. So man becomes or uh, is, was created as a reflection of who God is. Meaning, God placed himself in a mold, or rather, did the design, of course, himself, anyway, and created man from the mode of himself. Do we understand that? You know, if you want to create something in a mode, for those who do engineering, mechanical engineering, eventually they go to make um, all manner of things. Right? They melt steel, pour it into molds. For example, they are making an engine or something, and they pour it into molds, and the engine takes the form of that mold. Praise the Lord. So that is exactly who we are in spirit. And it's gradually becoming a reflection in the body. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Number three, there was a pattern or divine order for acceptable worship. There was a pattern for divine order for, okay, there was a pattern or divine order rather for acceptable worship. Worship. The book of Leviticus gives us a good insight as to the mind of God with respect to worship. Can someone give us, I mean, you know, we talk about children, of course, go through um, tasks or assignments, and they are asked to give more like a summary of specific books of the Bible. They've done that like once or twice, right, Profola? So, if we are looking at the book of Leviticus, here it says that this is more or less a book that gives us uh, a pattern or divine order of acceptable worship. What would you, what are the things that are contained in Leviticus? The book of Leviticus. What are the things that, um, if you read through it, helps us to understand, oh, okay, this is how God wants us to do this, this is how God wants us to do that, and all of that. Can anyone answer? Anyone? Bro, Francis, your laugh is being contained. Oh yeah, give us an answer. Have you read the book of Leviticus back to back? I have, but those, those books are tedious. So genealogy, yeah, genealogy and all that stuff and history. So Ah, well, um, I think Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus is so okay. tedious. How are they Theology tedious? and all that stuff is <laughs> is hard to remember. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
<laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so if you believe it's tedious, that is the book of Leviticus, can I see your hand? I won't call you if you believe it's tedious. Okay, so we all believe, except for Brother Francis, that it is not tedious. All right, so Sister Evelyn. It's not interesting. Not very interesting. Ah, what God wrote is not very interesting. It is very interesting to know that it's not interesting. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sister Evelyn. Okay, no, sister, okay, let uh, Sister Diola speak. The book of Leviticus. Well, it's a lot about the rules on what is expected of worship and sacrifices. The sacrifices in which some of them, the children, um, the last children, they also mentioned them. Sacrifices of praise, the one of a seed offering and all those offerings, they were all listed out in Leviticus. Okay. So, you heard her. Sacrifices, offerings, how they were supposed to conduct themselves here or there. Praise the Lord. My Bible, if your Bible is like mine, it has a, like a summary of that book. And I'll just brief, it's a short summary, so I'll just briefly read it. It says, um, our entire lives should glorify God, from our religious worship to our daily tasks. With this in mind, the book of Leviticus was written as a handbook for the priests and Levites, the religious servants of Israel. Leviticus gives detailed rules concerning the daily lives of the Israelites and special procedures for the worship of the Lord. It provides instructions for offering sacrifices. Leviticus also describes the proper methods for the Israelites to, to observe major festivals and holidays and for the priests to carry out duties of their office. You get that. So there was order in form of patterns, and this guided the way the children of Israel lived following that period, up to date. They still have festivals, right? Yes, yes. With respect to the festivals, Feast of uh, First Fruits, Feast of Unleavened Bread, and so on and so forth. Praise the Lord. So, they had the pattern from the time of Moses, because these patterns were given to Moses to institute for the children of Israel, right? And for us, there are several things that we can learn from this. One, which is within context of our study, that there is detail upon detail upon detail as to how we worship God how God wants us to come before him. Yes, we might not be doing all of the sacrifices that they are doing right now, but there is still order. Amen? There is still what? Order in how we come before the Lord and how we live our lives. We don't just live our lives anyhow. Praise the Lord. From the worship or daily tasks, sorry, from the um, physical service in church, to our daily lives or daily tasks out there. All of it is worship. We've talked about this before. Amen. So, what is acceptable? Remember, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. What does it say? Especially verse 1. Usually, we, 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 it is the King James Version that comes to our mind. I beseech, oh yeah, let's cross it. One, two, go. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, right, that you present your bodies, bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your what? Reasonable service. Praise the Lord. So you present your bodies. You present your bodies. I want us to get to the good points so that we can conclude next week. Number four, there was an order for conquest. There was an order for what? Conquest in taking of the land. The book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 to 15. The war 
against Jericho. Who can give us a quick summary of that passage? Or the order that was given to them, the plan, the pattern that was given to them? Sadiola? Hello? The children of Israel were told by God on what to do for seven days. For the okay. f- first six days, they were meant to go around the they were meant to go around Jericho without making any word, without saying anything. Mm-hmm. Then on the seventh, they were meant to go around, I think up to like five times. Then on the fifth time, they were told to make a shout. At that point, the wall will come down. Thank you. So um Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 to 15, describes an encounter that Joshua himself had with the Lord. The Bible says here, And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? So he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Joshua, and Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Now we know that this is not an angel, because angels do not accept worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are we together? So we know that this is the Lord himself, as the commander of the host of heaven. Praise the Lord. Coming to the battle and standing with a drawn sword for judgment against whoever is against him. And Joshua approached him and said, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, I'm neither. He said, But as the commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Meaning, something must happen. Praise the Lord. And Joshua, recognizing or seeing this, he worshipped because he understood what he just said. So there is an understanding when it comes to Order. You must understand order. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verse 15 says, Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Now, he understood where he was. And he obeyed. So, orders are meant to be what? Obeyed. Patterns are meant to be obeyed, followed. Praise the Lord. In chapter 6 of that same chapter, uh, book, the Bible says that from that point, he began to give instructions. He began to give instructions. He began to describe how they were meant to go about uh, uh, executing the war. Amen? That is order. So number 4 says there was an order for conquest in taking the land. Progression of events. Amen? There was an order for taking, of course, he told them, I have given Jericho into your hand, as verse 2. It's king and the mighty men of Velo. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all round the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear, he gave them details of what they had to do. Praise the Lord. So waiting on the Lord for the plan and instructions to engage is in warfare rather, is important. When you have a, would I say, contention, you don't just run and say, ah, no, this is how I'm going to approach prayer. Amen? Now, we are, we are talking about, because that's where we fight our battles, right? In prayer. We don't carry swords and spears. We don't carry guns. Amen? We fight our battles as believers in prayer on our knees. So when we engage, there is how the Lord wants us to engage. And in engaging him in conversation, he gives us instructions. He gives us directions on what to do. So there is a series of events that we are supposed to follow even to get the results that we want. Now, this is not just about principles. However, it is all about principles. So there is physical principles. There is spiritual principles. Physical principle is general, but spiritual principles is spiritual. Praise the Lord. And it is not the same for every 
case. Amen? So if somebody told you, ah, I wanted a child, the Lord told me, um, go and you and your husband. Of course, the general principle is you must meet together. Amen? Amen? But you might say, go on a three-day fast. Somebody says that to you, ah, God said we should go on a three-day fast. So after we did that, eh, conception came. You, you, didn't, you didn't hear God, or you didn't go to God. You now say, ah, that's the pattern, oh, that's the principle. Oh, yeah, three-day fast. My wife, come, let's fast for three days. And nothing happens. I say, ah, God is not answering our prayer. Did he ask you to go on a three-day fast? Do we understand? So everyone has his or her own engagement and encounter with the Lord that brings to pass, or where you rather encounter where you receive order or orders or instructions or patterns that you must follow to get what you are asking for or what the Lord wants you to do. So certain foundations were established and the instructions are meant to be followed. Number five, there was an order in the singers and the ministry. There was an order in the singers and ministry in the tabernacle of David. First Chronicles chapter 6, verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 6, verse 32. Media, I'm not on my own this, this morning, Abby. First Chronicles 6, verse 32. It says, They ministered with music at the tabernacle until Solomon built the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. They carried out their work, following all the regulations handed down to them. Can we have that in the New King James? Who has the New King James translation? You can quickly read for us. The word there, um, they use the word order there, right? They were ministering with the music before the dwelling place of the tabernacle of meeting until Solomon had built the house of the Lord in Jerusalem and they served in their office according to their order. Amen. Now, David had instituted uh, what they were supposed to do. And he received that instruction from the Lord on how to go about it. And for every, as we would see, every engagement, there's a part where we would um, be looking at um, some other persons that the Lord gave instructions to. However, for every one of them, they had to receive instruction from the Lord. They had to have their own pain. Moses couldn't have used, sorry, David couldn't have used Moses' instructions. I said, oh, the instructions, God has, you give me this, but I want to borrow from Moses too. No. He received his own instruction for the tabernacle. And as we will see, there's also Ezekiel's temple. I mean, I, uh, uh, coming into that, it, it gives you a different perspective about, okay, so there is the tabernacle of Moses, there is the tabernacle of David, and then there is the Ezekiel's temple, which is a reflection of the New Testament church. How the Lord wants us to engage him. We will see that um, hopefully next week by the grace of God. However, with respect to this, there is an order in, you know, remember we said the singers and the ministry in the tabernacle. For this particular uh, passage of scripture from verse 31 to 48 gives us insight into the people that David set in their positions or places to do specific things. Praise the Lord. Now, it says, David assigned the following men to lead the, worship, uh, sorry, the music at the house of the Lord after the ark was placed there. And then we've read verse 32. Verse 33 says, these are the men who served along with their sons. Eman, the musician, was from the clan of Kohath. And then you have his genealogy. His genealogy was traced back to Joel and on and on and on. Verse 39 says, Eman's first assistant was Asaph from the clan of Geshem. 
Asaph's genealogy was traced back through and on and on. And then verse 44 says, Ammon's second assistant was Ethan from the clan of Merari. Ethan's genealogy was traced back and on and on. In verse 48, it now says, Their fellow Levites were appointed to various other tasks in the tabernacle, the house of God. So there is order. There is what? Order that must be followed. And this is particularly addressing musicians. So for all, all of us who are involved in the music ministry, or we are singers, or we are instrumentalists, we are all musicians that are meant to worship God or bring service to God in a certain way. Not breaking ranks. There is order. And having that understanding helps you to begin to seek the Lord, even for your own ministry. That Lord, what is the order? What is, I mean, if you are you are in a uh, group, there must be that understanding that, okay, Lord, help us to, we are praying for the group now, help us to follow your pattern for this. That there is no flesh, there is no, because there is the essence, or rather there is the tendency for human wisdom, for human knowledge, for human experience to come into play part time in every moment of engagement. But where we are getting our instructions from the Lord, where uh, there is already laid down rules or orders that the Lord will have us to follow, then it makes a place of receiving the Lord, even as he says, that he inhabits the praises of his people. Praises that he accepts is where he shows up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Finally, as we close, the New Testament church is to be a place of order. Colossians 2 verse 5. The New Testament church is to be a place of order. Can someone read for us? Colossians 2 5. Quickly. Colossians chapter 2, verse 5. Who has the mic? For though I am far away from you, my heart is with you, and I rejoice that you are living as you should, and that your faith in Christ is strong. Thank you, bro, for that. Living as you should is the phrase there that indicates order. In my translation, it says, For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Your good order. So there is a bad order. If you place the cat before the horse, is that a good order or a bad order? If you place the cat, you know what the cat is? Before the horse, is it a bad order or a good order? So if you place the rope before the horse, before the cat, is it a good order or a bad order? Bad order. <laughs> bad order. Praise the Lord. So, but the horse must be before the cat. Why? Because the horse pulls the cat. So there is a good order in the church. How we must conduct ourselves. The Lord helps us in Jesus' name. We will continue on this next week by the grace of God. And we will dig deeper into, because now we are going into deep, uh, deeper parts of order, uh, patterns. As it relates to worship of God, as it relates to service. Amen. Father, we thank you. We give you praise for your word that has come to us. Thank you for the understanding that you have brought to us. Thank you for the journey, even into understanding. We are enjoying every bit of it. Help us that our hearts remain open to receive your word as we go along in this journey. Holy Spirit, take us by the hand and lead us. Help us, O oh Lord, that we will not uh, go outside of your plans and purposes for our lives. We will not go out of your pattern. Thank you, Father, for you have heard us. 
Here's how control the rest of the service. All glory be to your, your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.